Hi artists and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you a very unique tutorial in a sense that it's a combination of two of my favorite things in the whole world, ballet and cats. So these are going to be dancing cats and they were inspired by one of my favorite books growing up, which was Angelina Ballerina, which was a dancing mouse. And so I'm not that big of a fan of mice, but I love cats. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to create these really fun and really whimsical ballet dancing cats. This is gonna be so fun, really whimsical, and a perfect piece if you're designing something for a nursery, or if you wanna do maybe a birthday card or something like that. These dancing cats or ballerina cats would be the perfect project for that. So if you're interested, keep watching. So grab some cold press paper. I have some Stonehenge Aqua cold press sheets, which I'm gonna be using for this project. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to sketch out our first cat. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. First things first is we do the head. So I'm gonna create an oval type shape right here, which will connect to the body. And so for this body, I'm gonna make it a little bit of more of a roly poly shape because we're, we're kind of going with an anamorphic kind of um, theme here. So we're creating a, kind of like a jelly bean type of shape right here for the rest of the body. I'm gonna speed a little bit through this, but if you want some tips on how to draw a human body, then I'm going to add a card above with a video that explains exactly my technique for how, how to do that. So right here, I'm gonna make the cat have a, a classical ballet pose, which is called an arabesque. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm intentionally keeping my drawing really stick figure like right now because I'm trying to figure out the pose. So I'm not super happy with where this leg is. So I'm gonna erase that and I'm gonna lower the leg a little bit just to make it a little less, I don't know, dramatic or something. So we're gonna lower that leg. And again, keeping this very, very simple because I'm just blocking out my shapes right now. Adding a little foot, which is just a little almond shape. Um, and here I'm just adding a little heel to that, to that almond shape to make it look like a point shoe. And then for the arms, I'm going to just trace out, um, just again, like a stick figure, um, where these arms are going to be. And I think I'm actually going to keep my drawing super simple like this and kind of cartoon like, cause it's going to add to some of that whimsical children's book kind of aesthetic that I'm going for. Um, so adding some little pointy ears at the top. And then from here on out, it's all about just adding the little details. So once you've sketched out the overarching look of your drawing, then it becomes really easy to just start, you know, adding in the costume. Um, I also added a little crossbar um, in the middle of the head. So that way, when I start painting it, I'm gonna know exactly where the features are gonna be. And this is something else I touch upon in that video I mentioned earlier about how I draw people and figures. So not to sound like a broken record or anything, but if you want more detail about this process of of, you know, composing your, your figures, then I would suggest um, watching that because I'm going to be much more detailed in it. All right, so I've added a little tutu here, which is like a little powder puff shape. And then I'm going to add the bodice, which is connected, as you can see, to this vertical line that I drew down the middle of the body, which is my guide for which side and which um, direction my figure is oriented towards. So that's a good tip, especially if you're trying to figure out, you know, directions and angles, uh, is that, you know, you can create guides for yourself so that way uh, things become a lot easier in terms of sketching out where everything goes exactly and it making sense on your on your body in terms of I don't want to call it perspective but just the directions and orientations of the body all right so I've added some very simplified features like the eyes the nose and the mouth and of course a cat's tail so now that I have this done I'm going to repeat this process four times on all four quadrants of my watercolor paper the principles are the same for each and every one of these so I'm going to speed up the footage but just know that it's exactly the same process, just with small and minor changes to the arms, the legs, that jelly bean shape for the torso in the middle to make them look a little bit different. So just follow along.
So I'm pretty happy with how this is shaping up. So the next thing that I usually do for all of my paintings is I'll take a kneaded eraser and lighten all my lines because I don't want my watercolors to get super muddy with all of this um, graphite that's on the page. So I just um, create kind of like a, a sponge shape with my kneaded eraser and lightly tap um, or press onto all of my drawings to, as you can see, it's lightening all the lines. So I still have my guide, it's just not so dark and it's um, gonna make the colors really come to life in a much cleaner and brighter way. So now is the fun part, which is we get to paint. So I have my watercolor palette. This is my ultimate watercolor palette from one of my other videos that I prepared earlier this year. So I'm gonna start by mixing a bluish gray color that I'm gonna use for the first cat that we drew together. So feel free artists to use whatever color you wanna use for this first cat. It can be a, you know orange tabby, it can be a brown. Um, I've decided to make this one a gray cat, so I'm gonna start with that. I'm using a Princeton number no. 10 round brush for this because I really like the fact that it has a very narrow tip, but also has a very generous size full body which retains a lot of water and paint. So right here I'm just going to fill in a lot of that original painting that I did, skipping the bodice as well as the tutu. So I'm just going to fill in these arms, the hands, I'm going to go all the way and just cover the entire face regardless of the details that I added in the facial features earlier on because I'm going to go over that with a smaller brush a little bit later on. So right now it's all about applying that foundational base layer over the entirety of my drawing. I'm intentionally keeping the paint very diluted and watery because number one, I want to retain some of those details that I did in the face so I can go over them later on. But also my philosophy is that it's always easier to add more than it is to take away, especially with watercolors. You can layer all day long. And um, in fact, that'll improve the overall effect of your painting. So I think that it pays off to be conservative. And like I said, you can always add more as you go. So we're now gonna move on to the tutu. And for this, I'm just gonna take the tip of my brush and just make some very squiggly lines. So we're talking about like W-like shapes. Um, and I'm doing that very, very lightly on the tip where the skirt ends. And that gives it that little froofy quality that we expect from tutus. And while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and paint the bodice of this kitty cat dancer in a toned down pink. So what I did is I took some, what was this, quinacridone magenta and mixed it with a little bit of sienna. And the reason why I mixed it with a sienna is because I don't want the pink to pop way too much off of this figure. I want it to be softer and blend in. So um, in that sense, it just, it makes it go a lot better with the gray fur of the cat. I'm gonna take that same color and go over the edge of my tutu again with that color. So as you can see, that ties that tutu in with the bodice and it looks a lot more natural and um, it just goes well together and, and defines that edge of that tutu. So now I'm gonna add some stripes on this cat. So taking a darker version of the color that I did for the base layer for the fur, and I'm gonna add these tab marks or, or lines um, where I want the stripes to be. So I'm starting with the arms right here and just adding these very simple notches all the way up. The notches become angled towards the nose of the cat. So that's a good way to think about it for the face is that you want all of those notches to be um, facing towards the nose of the cat. So on the top, they're you know vertical, on the sides, they're horizontal. Um, same thing applies for the legs where we're just adding, you know, again, notches, it's very simple, all the way down until we reach the feet. And I decided that I wanted this cat to have stripes, but if you feel like you're in the mood for spots or patches or you know any other kind of decoration, go for it. After putting the finishing touches on these legs, I'm gonna move on to the bodice. And this is another place where you can really make this your own and um, you know, and, and be as unique and, and um, creative with this as you want. So right here for the top of the bodice, I'm gonna add a little brush stroke to define that edge. I recommend doing that. But within the, the main torso of a cat, then you can you know add some sparkles, you could add stripes, you could add, um, you know, whatever it is you want. If you wanted to add a pattern or something, you could do that too. That could be really nice. And I would love to see what you guys come up with because I feel like there's so many ways that you could personalize this and make this completely your own. So I'm happy with this. I'm adding some more of that darker shade to the tutu, again, to tie the whole thing in and maybe a little bit of a shadow here on the edge to give it a, you know, a bit more dimension. 
Okay, I put way too much water on this shadow, so I need to kind of, you know, brush it out a little bit and blend it so it doesn't end up being like a big patch somewhere on her body. Okay, so then for the nose and the features, this is where I've changed to a number zero brush, very, very tiny brush. Um, and I just basically did a triangle for the nose and a W. It's gonna be a very simple W for the smiling mouth of the cat. So this is really, really easy, as you can see. Then I'm gonna add the eyes. And so for that, we're just creating an archy curve that gets thicker at the top. And so that's kind of to define like the eyelid. And I like to keep the features really simple. So, you know, you, a lot of people get really stressed out about, you know, doing faces and things like that. So the best way to counter that, just keep it simple. Um, so I'm adding a, a bit of a darker color for the interior of the ears. And for the whiskers, I'm gonna take the same brush and just lightly draw three long lines so um, that start from the left and the right side of the of the nose <laughs> and that angle outwards so i think it's so much easier to just follow along with what i'm doing because it's really hard to explain so just follow along with me um, i'm also going to define some of the edges of the arms a little bit just so that it stands out so you don't necessarily have to do this if you don't want to it depends on what color you're using for the cat but for mine i want um, a little bit of an edge on some of the some of the areas to kind of make it look like it's a bit more defined okay so finishing up the tail maybe a little bit more of a shadow here and there some you know this is at your discretion so wherever you feel like you know you'd like to bring the image forward then you can add some more darker areas there so I'm really happy with how this first cat looks. She looks adorable, really whimsical and, and childlike. I'm gonna take these same techniques, these same rules and apply it to every single one of the cat, just changing colors, changing some of the features. So you can see how just by using this one base, you can yield so many different results depending on what you decide to customize. So let's speed things up and let's see how many different variations I can come up with uh, based on this same one template.
Last step before we wrap this up is to erase all of our extra markings with a kneaded eraser. So I think we're done. We have a um, Siamese, we have a calico, we have a tabby cat. We have so many different variations and this brings me so much happiness. It's just such a fun, whimsical, you know, joyous piece that I feel like will bring a smile to both adults and children alike. So that's it artists, we are done. So I hope you enjoyed these fun, whimsical cats with a little ballet twist. And as always, thank you so much for watching and joining me every week, and I'll see you next time.